Greetings. Welcome to the Rose Garden. We often meet here since this is one of my favorite places and today it seemed like a perfect day for a slow stroll through the garden. As you can look around and see, there are a lot of things that are happening. It's spring here in Farmer's Branch and I don't want you to miss it. Every day brings forth new blooms, new blossoms, new sounds in the air as the birds are singing and it's an excellent place to come out and exercise social distancing while getting outside. If you look behind me, you can see very easily and clearly how our aisles are marked out. You can walk with a friend, one on one side, one on the other, talk and not worry about getting too close because in between you will be some lovely rose bushes. A perfect place for a slow stroll. Here in my hand, I'm holding Julia Child. She's starting to come into bloom and she is in a bed with one of our newest members of the garden. Over here is Zelda, our zebra, and we felt Zelda was very appropriate for this garden since this garden has many stripes. Not only do we have amazing roses in this garden, but you'll find seasonal color of all variety. It's like you're really your own little arboretum here right in the middle of the city. Um, we have our red yuccas that are fixing to bloom all along the edge of our pathway over here. Behind me where the little wooden teepees are is our Monarch Butterfly Station. If you've ever wondered what to plant at your own home to encourage the visitation of the monarchs, take a look in our garden. You'll find plants that are there both for the larvae as well as the nectar plants for the butterflies. And you know we were talking about the red yuccas earlier. Pretty soon you'll be able to see the hummingbirds visiting them. I'm going to take you to a couple of different places through the garden, so come on along. And now we're entering into what I like to call the garden room. This is a really nice spot right smack dab in the middle of the garden. Sometimes you don't even make it all the way up here, you're so enthralled by the roses below. But this is a great place to have a seat, listen to the sound of the water. The Farmers Branch Women's Club donated these fountains several years ago and they certainly add some charm to this area. Um, in the background, you always feel like you have sunshine around you with the kaleidoscope abelias. It also has a beautiful flat space that if you chose to, your family, only your family because we're social distancing, you could throw out a blanket and have a, a nice little picnic out here. Beautiful spot. And if you kind of look all around, you'll see the vastness of the garden and so when you talk about taking a slow stroll this doesn't necessarily have to be a short stroll i was mapping it out the other day and it is if you were to walk up and down all the aisles walk around all of the beds you could easily put in a mile and a half and never leave the garden and you would have plenty of time to stop and smell the roses on that slow stroll uh, you know i told you i picked up julia child here uh, one of the interesting things to me is the story behind all these roses. So while you're out here, maybe pick a rose that you think is fragrant or you love the color, whatever. Look it up. See if you can find out some history about it. Julia Child, no surprise, is the color of butter. When she was out in the field selecting which rose she wanted to carry her name, that was essential. Some even says it has the fragrance of butter. I don't quite discern that, but it's always possible. Um, some of the other roses out here came all the way to us from France. Uh, we have a whole display garden on the other side over here that are French roses. Our roses are labeled. They'll tell you what classification of rose they are, whether they're a shrub rose, which mainly means you're gonna put it in the yard and treat it like a flowering bush. A hybrid tea, which might want a little bit more care, but provide a longer stem for you. A rambler, which just does what it says. It rambles all over the place. Um, some of our ramblers are in bloom now, and they will be blooming along the fences. So take a moment to explore. You can get in all those steps you need to get in. We have the aisles that will help keep your social distance. We have lovely spots to sit down when you need to take a break or perhaps just reflect on the many blessings that we have. Um, I know that times are challenging, but those blessings are out there. Take a moment to think about them in this lovely setting. Let's go look at a couple other places. Come along with me. So 
In this part of the garden, you might notice that the name tags don't say something like Julia Child, but instead there's a number. This particular one says 1919. What does that mean? Well, this is one of the many rose trials we participate in in the garden here. So this one tells me that this is year 19, so this is last year's class, and the entry number is 19. Over here I have 198. And if you will notice, this particular trial has three different repetitions. So you would go around and see that same rose in a random spot in three different places. We give this information, we evaluate them every month from March until through October, and we send this information in to the American Rose Trials for Sustainability. And they compile the data and they look for a rose which does really well in our area that requires no spraying. Um, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Now these roses tend to look a little messier, but it's spring and everything loves spring, so it looks good now. But we do not prune these roses and we do not spray these roses and we do not fertilize these roses. So these roses over here have to plop into the middle of the Metroplex and do well through our crazy winters, our crazy springs and our crazy summers and our crazy falls. So when you see a rose that looks really good here, there's a really good chance that rose is going to do excellent in your yard without needing a green thumb. Um, the other thing that we look for in these trials is we're constantly evaluating for rose rosette disease. And so this gets a new group out into the garden every year and we evaluate that and look for those signs because we all are looking for a solution to that problem. Uh, but if you see roses that simply have a number on it, it's part of a trial. We do the ARCH trial, which is the American Rose Trials for Sustainability. We do AGRS, which is American Garden Rose Selections. We trial for weeks and we trial for stars. So we've got four really strong trials going on at all times in the garden. And you're only gonna see the arch trial over here, but if on your slow stroll, you were to go back out to the pathway near the creek and follow that path all the way behind City Hall, it takes you to another rose garden. And that one is primarily trials. Don't let the word trials fool you. It is still a glorious place to go spend the day. So if you're looking for more than those 10,000 steps, head on over to the other garden as well and take that in. You won't be sorry. Plus you get a nice little walk along the creek side. Anyway, that's just a little bit I wanted to share with you about these roses. Let's see what else we might be able to find. Now we're going to end this little session with a very special rose in this garden. This pink rose. Now just looking at it, you might not think, wow, but this pink rose was actually discovered here in this garden. Um, this is known as climbing a farmer's dream. It is a sport of Belinda's dream. Belinda's dream was the first rose to be named Earthkind and was hybridized by Dr. Basie at Texas A&M University. When we were having a special event out here, uh, Greg Grant, who many of you all may know for his, um, I don't know, he's an amazing plantsman, he's an extension agent, he has a special eye for identifying plants that will do well in people's homes. He was out here walking the garden and noticed that our Belinda's dream that we had was throwing out these really long canes, totally untypical of what the growth habit is. So he took that, he propagated it, and had successfully been able to do it, and it is now available as climbing farmer's dream right here in our very own garden. The downside is it only blooms pretty much in the spring, but it is so lovely to have this rose in our garden and know that this is where it originated. I hope that you all stay healthy, be safe, practice all the smart things we're supposed to be practicing. Wash your hands, sanitize, keep social distance. But I hope that you find some time to keep that social distance here in this garden as it wakens up in spring. And um, it's just a delightful place maybe to forget about some of the troubles that we're all thinking about out in the world right now. Have an amazing day and we'll see you next time in the garden.